Okay, let's call the meeting to order at 6.30. Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? I don't even want to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Carl. So if I had to add to the agenda, your committee's volunteer community support improving community of the committee's grant application. And also under that heading to accept the resignation from the community of the committee. And then a solution, item number 13 on the agenda has already been addressed by the select board for further action. Okay. Uh, thank you. Are there any other additions or adjustments? Is Mark not coming tonight or is this late? I think. That's not on a I haven't heard from him. Just curious. Yeah, okay. I didn't hear anything. Um, I think that covers everything on MLS2. So that's good. Um, invoices, review, and order questions. Um, Invoices are here. I haven't looked through them first. I'm going to give you yeah, the honors. I have, to, I have to sign, but. But if anyone has any questions for Rosemary or Carl from this highlighted sheet, thank you, Rosemary. That's very helpful. They're mostly highlighted this way. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't have any questions. You're good. No questions. And you're are you good, Duncan? Or do you want to wait a second? Oh, the bills. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Um, review and approve minutes from past joint um meeting from May 10th, the regular board meeting on May 15th, the economic development roundtable on the 24th, and a special meeting on June 1st. And second. You have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'm going to abstain because I missed the latter two, but that's fine. Hi. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And one abstain. Okay. Um, select board issues and concerns. We received an email from Charlie, and I'll just read it. Um, I'll read it in a minute. I just have to find it. I should add it up. Okay. Um, the email reads, um, just salutations. As they proceed along Plot Road, please direct highway crew to cut the dead elms on my property that are contiguous, uh, with the right pronunciation, of the town right of way. The argument that the town crew only removes vegetation Vegetation that's in the right of way is specious. Species. A fancy word to be asked. That would be a smaller word that I could pronounce. <laughs> when the town performed ditch mowing, they cut well outside the right of way, damaging or destroying some of my fruit trees and deciduous maple uh, saplings. The dead elms I am requesting be cut pose more a more likely threat to public safety on the right of way than the mature heirloom apples. The, fl the flail mower trimmed. Mowing outside of the right of way was described to me as preventative. The removal of the dead elms outside of the right of way would likely uh, would likewise be preventative. Just in asking for consistency. Um, so, thoughts from anyone? I would say, first of all, I totally agree with the assessment with regard to uh, mowing and tripping and then highway and that we could say it was about whether it's preventative or not, and the other one would be the third and the last second. Very well. That also goes to the trees. I would have a subjective, I guess, but I'm going to be worried. We have a highway for them. You know, Charles sitting right here. I would suggest that it would be a good idea to have 
put them all good together in the measure measure them to make sure they are in my way anyway. And then uh, if they are better than they are in one of the things authorized to say whether or not they represent the ages of the family father. So do we even need Jason in that conversation or is the NSF technology warden first? He said, it, he said it's an assessment of the tree warden. So Jason could help with what? Measuring. Measuring. You know, I'm not just shooting that they're outside the boundary. But I see them working outside the boundary. Right now, you go up and see the eviction, they're way past the right over and clearing on the uh, branch, and I don't know if you can it that. It's 25, it's a three ride road, not only 50 feet, slightly less, 25 foot from the center. They're way beyond 25 foot from the center of work they're doing. So, again, the argument that they only work in the right way of the Okay, so uh, I can follow up with Jason on ditching, let me just make sure we're within the measurement. Um, in terms of the trees, you're saying the trees aren't in the right of way currently, or do you think they're probably not? Probably not. Do you think it's when they fall? <laughs> do you think that it's worth? I mean, because that have a lot of trees throughout town. I think. Um, do you think it's worth asking Noel, the tree warden, to help with determining? If we're getting done, it's worth asking. Okay. So we'll follow up and ask. Do you want him to contact me directly or do you want him to show up? Yeah, I'll just show up. Okay. Do you want him to contact me directly or do you want him to show up? Yeah, I'll just show up. Do you want him to contact me directly or do you want him to show up? Fair enough. Do you have a working doorbell? Okay. If he yells loud enough, maybe he'll get your attention. Uh, okay, that sounds good. So we'll connect with Noel and then I'll also follow up with Jason. Anything else that anyone has on that topic? I have recused myself because I am neighbors with Charlie, so I haven't said a word. Factual data. Uh, there was a storm last spring for a dead elm tree right down the road from what he's talking about, fell over in the roadway. Okay. Okie doke. Thank you, Charlie. You're welcome. Does that mean you're not calling the truth? Uh, it means we're going to call Noel. <laughs> it means we're going to call Noel. Uh, more to come on that. Uh, okay. Any other issues or concerns? No? Okay. No issues. Right. I, I haven't I, seen you for three weeks. I, 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 I kind of would like to visit about um, um road encroachment by a structure that's being built at Carl Powden's house. It's kind of like to visit about that, but we can do it. Now it's time no. to do it. Yeah, yeah we're sort of sure. we're sort of on that issue. Um, the issue is is. You know, long story. Um, she had um Jason, apparently Jason and Harbor Merrill come up and say she was building a garage on the back of her house. Turns out um it's eight inches too close to the road. And I told her that she could file um and ask with the town, what's it called? Um, an encroachment appeal or something. Um and Jason had gone up and talked with her, and it's just it was um, maybe not the most pleasant conversation she she's had this week. I went up and looked at that as well. Um, the house was in the right of way. My understanding was that Jason met the property owner and with how um, and the power was there too. Yeah, before, last year. Um, I believe the agreement was because the house was already in the right of way, and they were moving slightly towards the road right away. That the car that's in the right of way on the other side, they took that away. I believe the public works crew removed that. Yeah. Uh, to my knowledge, at no cost to the owner. Uh, but if you 
want something vile. I, Jason said that he was comfortable with that. The highway crew had discussed it. Yes, yeah, so, as long as they're... Um, Dorgan was just a little concerned that Jason was talking about moving the road three or four feet farther away. It wouldn't be on right away. I, I understand. I understand that. Um, she just has all those perennials and stuff planted there, and <clears throat> doesn't seem like it's a need, it's needed. With how narrow the road is there, sending a three hundred thousand dollar truck up there, like if it needs space, I don't know. We can need to have two lanes of travel past there, but that's my opinion. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just saying. I think yeah. Carl, you wanted to add something. I was, but but Mark mentioned uh, I spoke with Mrs. Keating today. And, yeah. And she said her main concern is that the road crew wants to the road over four feet. Right. And that uh, put the edge of the road close enough to her existing garden fence that she's concerned about what they allow the snow temperatures go back to get over that fence. And she, doesn't mind moving some other vegetation yeah. um, to accomplish that moving, but the damage to the fence would mean that we have to move that out to get a pretty good expense. But she told me that the garage is or is planned to be eight inches further to get the degree than that. Which, uh, the term that she and I use the easement for her to occupy the town. Yeah. Um, why are we moving? Why are we talking about moving a road? I'm confused. That's that's a really good question. <laughs> There's no. I would disagree with them. And the road has been there. There's. But why are we talking about it? Because her house is eight inches into the right of way, they want to move it four feet. Yeah, her house is already eight inches in the right. Right, of way. She's and she's building a garage farther into the right. Of way. Right, but you've been out by there. You know, there's a phone pole right beside the road. You... I know it's a very tight spot, and the board in the past okay. said that they would respect Jason's judgment. Uh, and I asked Jason if he was comfortable. If he wanted. The board to make a decision he said he was comfortable but with I, what with the agreement that was made apparently the landowner had not. i don't know she was just really concerned that about what carl was just saying jason's not here i don't i haven't heard of the road moving but he's going to be here in two weeks and we'll talk to him. I don't know if that's going to be too much of a hold up for the landowner. Or... So we, mm -hmm. where is this person with building the garage? Carl Powden's old place. No, 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 that's not what I mean. I mean, have they started building? Yes, they've got the puddings put in and the frame up. So I, I think that Dora can make a good thing that works to communicate with people from the town prior to doing the construction. Do you know for sure who uh, it was? Howard Romero, Howard was on board. Right. So, I think it was Howard and Jason. Did, did you think Jason had gone up last year, right? Uh, I only heard about it this year. Yeah. And I know he went up there. Uh, don't quote me. I believe it was last Friday. If it wasn't last Friday, it was last Thursday. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, but I, then maybe it was the road foreman before Jason went up with Howard and talked about it. She's been planning this for since Carl died. The for, thing is, yeah, I don't yeah. care so much about Jason like giving the green light to put the garage in the right of way if he felt like he could work around it. The red flag for me is I don't want to talk about a road thing like. Well, that's money we don't have to spend. But I think there is an issue. I, I really think, you know, maybe the question, I don't know that she was given good information. In, in my opinion, if if there is something going on within the library, like, regardless of whether or not the existing buildings are already in project, they, they permit the use of the right of way, in my opinion, should have been issued. That permit could 
be the equivalent of granting these money. It would it would grant permission of the town to place a structure in the library or the primary residence. My understanding is that that would not be a place for information that we're right. ever given. And I think that's probably not right, but I think she was, you know, I think she relied on the information right. Right. to do what she did. And, you know, for I, for one, would be okay with the department to allow the construction of the garage to the library for that. But, but I'm just not. One more time. <clears throat> I think the issue is to go out and construct it in the library right away it gives her the legal right and it gets recorded in the, in the records. It, you know, it's something that can be looked up 50 years from now. And the then road commissioner, Marvin, can look at it and say, there's permit. Right. And that's the whole purpose of that permit. I mean, it's one of the purposes of that from a process is it gets to call it. And it's not just a handshake deal you know, like we got with Manchester. Hmm. <clears throat> That's fair. Uh, this is the first I heard of it. I yeah. think that was last yeah. week. But, yeah. now, my the my question of moving the moving the road over, that's a whole different question. That's the, yeah. Um, that doesn't need to happen. Well, my uh, question is, and this might be something we have to wait for Jason for, but does Allowing the building of the garage necessitate moving the road. No, no, not at all. That's pretty narrow there already. There's a lot, a lot more in trees and more there. visitation. I, so I probably Jason, but we'll need Jason's opinion. I'm hearing. Yeah, <laughs> it changes nothing about visibility at all. We're at the disagreements, Mark. You can keep saying it if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes you feel better. I mean, this is one of those, sorry, I'm just going to yeah. say it out loud because we're in a pu public meeting. This is a case of we know people, and this is why it's coming up, and that is the most concerning part of it to me. Um, and the fact that we know people is also, there's room for bias. We need to be careful. Right, um, I agree. I had no idea this was planned for over a year. You said Dorgan made an effort to reach out to the town and that there was just some maybe incorrect information communicated. The little that I know about it, Dorgan did deal with, with the, I believe, the then road Foreman, I'm not sure who that was. Okay. And Howard Romero, who was, a, who was a good personal friend of Carl and Dorgan's and was a cycle member. But and they visit, they came up and visited. They came up and visited and said, you know, if you do this, it should be okay. Um, the only person that had any authority in that discussion was the road one. Um, right. Because the road from the Mr. Hotline got a select board to issue right away from that scene. In my opinion, you know, that's I, that's a judgment call on the road from I guess, but in, in my opinion. So we right don't know whether a right of way permit has been issued or not. Right. No, I don't think it has, or this would be a non issue. That's but a if it hasn't been, do you think it would be good protection for both the town and Oregon to have a report? Yeah, I mean, and I think she talked to Carl to get one of his, right? Is that the gist she, of what she was asking? Or yeah. But she and I both. So, um, yeah, and she did say that it was, it was Jason who was up there this last year, and now, yeah, she and Jason, and yeah, she and um, Howard, and yeah, Howard, and Jason had a difference of opinion of what was discussed. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> It, it's eight inches. It isn't a big deal. Okay, let's move on. Um, but we'll follow up on whether or not we have a road permit. And if we don't, we want to issue one. Jason wants to issue one. We definitely need to do that. Okay. Um, any other issues or concerns? I'm a little afraid to ask. <laughs> I've been away for weeks. There could be more. I will say this. Our tech help. Really, he spent hours with me today. Tech help? Yeah. Our to help me 
I had lost my town email and it was a nightmare to get it back. And this guy from Rosemary Gates. Yeah, tech group. You know, it took a while to, to get a live breather, but that he was very patient with me and very patient and understanding of how oh, nice. terrible it is to use Mac. Okay, so, so we're going to uh, bill for over $1,000. Yeah, talk to us. Gotcha. She said that um, for, for a the early day, monthly thing. <laughs> Right. Treasurer report, review and approve bills. We talked about those warrants and licenses. I have a special license for Charismatic LLC, which is the get yours business on the main street. And what kind of license is it? Tobacco. Tobacco license. Motion to approve tobacco license for get yours. We have a motion. Do a second. Second. They already, they already have one, right? Yes. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 What else do you have, Rosemary? I have one request for abatement. Do you want to hold that hearing for the next set of meeting? Uh, this is just for penalties and interest. Definitely not. <laughs> well, no, we're rescheduling that. We may be. We don't know. Wow. Uh, hold that thought. Let's bring that up with our July third meeting, third discussion later this meeting. Okay. Um, I know it's on here at some point. Oh, yeah, number 12. Okay. What's our drop date for setting up that show? That first week of July. We'll talk about that with number 12 also. Okay. okay. Anything else, Rosemary? Yeah. Okay. Land purchases. Oh. So, uh, one department did, she uh, is aware of uh, land purchase that needs to uh, fit your procedures for approval. It's getting in your what was there that you would like to fifteen thousand dollars budgeted by the range and make purchase for that crowd which we could stockpile and use for a project coming up later this summer. And then there's forty thousand dollars budgeted for gravel and stone that would be a combination of gravel and erosion stone with the invoices that you had tonight. As spend about half of that is asking for a little to spend up to another twenty thousand dollars more crowded this month. Either as he said, either purchases or an option. But you won't know that and which source you would use so ready to start hauling and then we would call us to measures and ask who's got what available or what prices. You approve of this? So Mark asked if Evans yeah, talked to Jason about it. About an email. Yeah. Yeah, what did you just say? How what did you say, it, Evan? Mark was asking if I approved of it, and I said yes. I sent out a email. Yeah. So maybe you, you, you put me on the spot, but why not? Okay. Um, the fifteen thousand for the mud abatement is that actually for the mud abatement project, or is it some general road work? Can't remember the road name. From what I heard, it was a mud abatement project. That's what I heard. I don't remember exactly what it is. Yeah, digging it out and changing yep, yep. something. Fab fabric down. That's what I'm <clears throat> and I'll second that. Any discussion? I have a question. Um, so there's no other plan, bigger plan purchases for anything from his budget, from the highway specific budget at this point? For the rest of the remainder of the fiscal year, 
He has one more meeting for us today. What's your question? Then? My question is, does he have any other large expenses for the remainder of this fiscal year? Because related to the Related to this, but just overall highway budget. Right. <clears throat> None that I know. And then that leads to do these numbers track with what you would expect would be the balance? So they haven't spent anything in money. Yeah, I mean, I think you did budget 15,000. And there is 40,000 for gravel and film, which but at our last meeting or two meetings ago, we approved twenty thousand. That's guys asking for twenty. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, in terms of that question, would you be amenable to attend my motion, which would simply be up to approving or not to receive the budget that I got? No problem again. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Could you repeat I, that? I am. I am. I'm peaceful with that. So uh, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is um, approval of land purchase is up to a figure for which would equal the function of the law for the campaign. That was the intent. Not not to exceed. No, not to right. You good, Donna? Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, potential library trustee appointment by the I should do it every time I'll stay along with this. Right. It's an appointment, but it's really a resignation, right? Yeah. You accepted the resignation last year. Yeah, I resigned. Did we? I don't. I can't recall if we. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um, so the library trustees have their vacancy posted. They have candidates. They're going to meet with their candidates, and they're going to recommend somebody at our next meeting. It'll be really fast. All that one done. So it's just an update. Just an update. Yep. Um, number seven, discuss and consider the approval of the summer kickoff festival and deck race. Carol, do you want to kick this one off? There's a lot on this one. And so uh, I saw in the emails that uh, uh, that for that date. Um, the event organizers are Johnson Works in partnership with the community of the community. Uh, the event on Sunday is starting at 11 um, It's primarily uh, the agent people of the uh, vendor fair. And uh, the secondary event. Uh, is a rubber duck race. Uh, ducks being released off screen of the grid just at the edge of the studio center. Studio center. Sorry, I get confused with the place where also the studio is seeking a lot. <laughs> uh, so, and then downstream. Uh, the event organizer Terry pointed out to a certain location in the block that we're going to use as the finish line. Uh, so, this is not um, for you because of the time crunch in the time here. I'm not knowing who it is that's supposed to act on these requests for um, two different answers to that question. Um, so, that's why. Um, Areas here. Uh, so the two has two questions. Uh, one is the approval of the event on the main field, and second, what we can say to people, the upgrades they'd like to close part of the Pearl Street, roughly 45 minutes. 
and that requires a separate motion and certain conditions have to be met for closing the road. Um, to do that, uh, they would need to post uh, signs, they have closed signs for the detour. They did pass the basic and they do have a sign and confirm they put a sign that comes. And in the past, when they, when they made them available, the form of the event of the group has to go to the garage and pick up the sign that comes in the garage rather than having the bus on a set of somewhere. Um, so we, those are available if you are uh, we able to allow them to go to the for that time. Of some of the fans, the logistics, if you will, and that fact that we have a fundraiser for both the public community and the council. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, I read that there's uncertainty with who typically approves these types of requests. Um, and just for clarity, anytime Legion, any of the town properties like Legion Field or the Arboretum or Old Mill Park, those kinds of things, those would always come to select board for a select board approval. Um, that's just standard procedure. Um, so just to clarify that piece, uh, which is part of why you're here, one of two reasons. Um, so, board, do you have any questions, concerns, thoughts? Is the question is, is the main line uh, just insurance? Because while I agree that the select board would approve this, um, we have town committees, which Johnson Works is a little bit separate from the town committee. Our town committees still come to us and ask to have uh, Arbor Day celebration at the Arboretum um, Historic Society. And I'm glad that they don't, because they don't feel like they need to come to us and ask to have you know an open house celebration or uh, presentation at Whiting Cemetery, which is a town mm -hmm. cemetery. Um, I'm glad, and I think those are community building things. <laughs> Both communities are covered by town insurance. The fact that you're partnering with the town committee, I'm not fully sure that it covers everything under the town insurance, but that's just my read on it. I'm glad you submitted a form and I, I'm supportive of it. I guess I'm just not fully comprehending viability. So um, when we did the A kind, it was brought to our attention that by partnering with somebody, we got insurance. So then it was moving forward on everything. It's like, who can we partner with that makes sense? <laughs> That's insurance. Gotcha. And that, yeah. that was the town administrator at the time. Right. 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 Okay. Sorry, Evan, could you, did you say that when a town committee does an event they are covered by insurance is that what you said yeah okay if somebody went to uh arbor day at the arboretum they had a that was what a month ago or something you know if they got hurt or whatever it, it would fall on the town's insurance right um a private committee hosting an event with the town coupling with a committee gets really funky to me but um you have done one of these events with success in the past. And I think Johnson Works is great. It's just a, uh, I wish our insurance, our insurance company was fully consulted about that, but. I wish Brian had brought it up because he certainly had the opportunity. Yep, yep, uh, agreed on that. Well, I guess. I think that's why they partnered with the community of it to try and follow them. Yeah, un understood. It's a yeah. creative and thinking idea. What I was trying to figure as, I guess what level of involvement would we need the town committee to have in order to be comfortable knowing that our insurance is, you know, like cooking pizza. Well, <laughs> see, for me, right, you know, if, if we're we're asking, you know, 
how we're going to vote. I, I am supportive of saying we interpret as because they're partnering with a town committee that it would be covered. But I hear that we're, you know, we have concerns about whether the insurance would cover it or not. I, I personally think as long as they, they are partnering with the town committee that that covers that side of things. All right, Carrie. Um, so the oven committee is speaking all day, every day, which is that, uh, as the board of the Okay. Any other questions? I have a concern about closing the Gulf Street. Yeah, that would be one of them. I, my preference would be to keep at least one eye in the back of the Gulf I just think it's most difficult to have an eye in there to try and speak to our private client and to try and well enough so that people are. I support the children because of the idea of the concept. So, if I just be more comfortable, well, I need to try to keep that problem. Go ahead, Chair. Um, so, I have contacted the Lamar County Sheriff's Department and they kept on having a future down that day. Recept with traffic. I think closing it is. Fine, I have to one lane sign. I think somebody needs to be there specifically to make sure a child isn't just starting the road because people go pretty fast on the bridge. It was literally just a matter of parents not watching their kids. Yeah, no, it definitely needs to be traffic control on both sides. You know, you know really control like the sea water. You know, they can be the person that day unless there's a major car accident or the other, the other group that might be willing to help on that, they have in the past, is, is the fire department. Mm -hmm. um, they are all trained in traffic control. Um, you know, that's another you know, kind of key issue is whoever is dealing with the traffic is legally supposed to be you know, trained in traffic control. And uh, I, can, I don't talk to the fire this one's intermittent on thoughts on the Are you saying 45 minutes, Carrie, because that's how long you are going to actually have it closed, or is that like a lot of buffer time? So we ran some down the river and it's kind of closed right now. Maybe we'll get rain and rise some after and answer. So kind of like um, how long will it be? thing. <laughs> well, they even leave their origin. Got it. Okay. Seems like a pretty short race, actually. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so what do we want to do? Let's talk Legion Field. Can we, yeah, first. can we do two separate? So, yeah, Legion okay. Field. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, use of facilities uh, on Legion Field. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Um, second. Is there a concern because I'm on the Oven Committee voting on this? You can accuse if you want. I don't see a concern myself. I'm just, uh, do your best. I, I I think your question about insurance is a legitimate one and one that we should look into in the future. Oh. But I'm willing to. Would you be able to, to did Brian leave a contact with PSIF? Oh, okay. Do you, would you mind checking in? But I'm just. Uh, I know the hours are limited. The, the way the facility is. Or is, is structured is if the MSP can't provide insurance, that they are in essence waiving technology that they don't have insurance and waiving liability as a practical matter, that's really not what the paper is written on. Um, so we really don't. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Is there any other discussion about the use of Legion Field? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed or abstained? 
Okay, yeah. I have it. We assume that there's no conflict. Um, but if you do want to just check with the rec just to confirm, that would be great. Okay. Okay, they've got the first, the yeah. then they got they've the field. Got yeah, yeah. If there's a conflict, then somebody else wants to use it. Who would have to come? Joey, class? go ahead. That Justin is always who would in on all of these emails, and that he would love to partner more with them when it comes to the event. We are always trying to. There's everybody needs to raise money, um, but we have not been successful in having them really be a part of this. But we would welcome, and that would also help with insurance. Yeah. Maybe everyone can recruit for our vacancies on their committees <laughs> at the event. Yeah, okay. Uh, second item was closing Pearl Street. Not sure if I love the idea of closing Pearl Street, but I don't love the idea of one lane traffic. What's the time duration? The bus race is starting at 2.30. And, uh, they should be past the bridge in 20 minutes. They'll be past the bridge in 10 minutes, probably. Okay. No, so how long you're asking for an hour? I mean, it doesn't have to be this. I just, what's the best thing to do for if we have one the water, that's the idea. If you close it, or if you leave one lane open, you're going to have to have traffic control on both, both ends. Yeah, and closing it, the alternative route through School Street can't accommodate weight. And, and you've got, you've got all the you got all the buildings and stuff and stuff on the field, but you know, you're going to be running extra traffic. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a good solution. The race pigments. Go ahead, Brian. The Draw, race pigments. Go ahead. Do you think it's like the bend or something like that? It's going to be like my doctors. Or what is there? I mean, we might look at other people. We might get more. We have a town. Yeah. We have a town Facebook page, which four people follow. <laughs> uh, Especially if we were, if we were going to close the road, we tore it. I don't think we should close that road. Right? Personally, I don't think we should close it. I think I think we should try it. Like you said, you, you don't really know how to do it better. You might get the 25 and I get 150, you know. Um, so I, I'd be in favor of not closing it, trying it. And you're hoping that it would be an annual event. I would like all of these events to be an annual yeah. event, so I will be seeing you for the time here. So maybe this could be like a trial. Yeah, work done. And if you do have the sheriff's department, they could set up the cruiser, I assume, on Main Street side with their lights on that side anyway, mm -hmm. and they could be stationed at the other side, like maybe between the two of those things, or they're in the middle of a bridge or something. Like, I feel like the sheriff's department being in, involved would be beneficial. Uh, and maybe a fire, um, if the fire department is willing, a person or two between that, I feel like that should be good without closing the road. I mean, the town, like the elementary school walks down through there every year for their mask parade. Okay, are you, is everybody feeling okay about this, about not closing the road? I am. Okay. I, I do think what Beth said about reaching out to the fire department would be a good idea. Um, if they're available, having them around to help. It may only matter if there is a crowd there, but if there's a crowd there, I think we will want the extra crowd management, so. Yeah, that's what we have to 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday night live doesn't really get traffic control. No. And now that's the control should be anywhere. It, it makes every zone once. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You can see the start and finish from it. Yeah. 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 Ye
community oven committee is seeking a thousand dollars to uh, purchase ingredients to continue offering pizzas for free and a cooler. So I motion to approve the grant application of the community ovens okay. for a thousand dollars from the remodel electrical office. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, me. Ayes got it. Um, community oven resignation. I don't know if I can find that one. Can you resonate? Great. Yeah. Can you? Uh, is it in here? Um, Jasmine Eight was posting it. I think she has posted it. Yep. She has posted it in the yeah, I think we just accept his resignation. Motion to accept resignation of Ray from the Community Oven Committee. Uh, sending the thank you card for his service. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Um, which reminds me, I have thank you cards at my house to contribute to the file. Okay. Um, next up. For new items, review and approve engineering services contract for Scribner Bridge scoping study in 15 minutes. So, Rob is here. Hi, Rob. Hello. That was for two, I thought. So, I knew I knew you. Yes. No, put a face turning. Yes, hello. Thank you for having us on the agenda. Oil planning, and we have uh, carried out um, the, uh, the direction so far uh, in terms of the grant that the town received from in plans for a scoping study of Scribner Bridge that includes both the um, historical sensitive repairs to the bridge as well as flood mitigation control activities. Uh, in the past, there was a study done to identify um, preferred alternatives of flood mitigation. At that time, it was, a, it was called a low water crossing. Um, so the water was still over the roadway and go around the bridge rather than minimal damage, superficial damage to the roadway and easily repaired. So uh, in advancing that concept and trying to make progress for the town after some years and the more recent issues with Halloween storm, um, we have uh, a scoping study grant from VTrans to uh, look at those, um, uh, look at options that are available to the town for both of those situations related to the bridge. So again, that's the historic preservation minded repairs and the flood control. We uh, issued an RP, we received uh, one proposal, which was a little more expensive than we anticipated. And uh, Evan uh, took some time, thank you Evan for reviewing the that, that. Oh, Mark did it, I'm sorry. Yep, it's okay. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, we were all surprised too. So we didn't we didn't have to compare our proposals. We only had one, but we appreciate you helping us out on that. Uh, per the direction of the previous town um, administrator, I did two things. I reached out to the and then asked if there was any way they could increase the award amount. There was a very firm no. And I secondly, uh, per the direction of uh, the previous town indicator reached out to the consultant and initiated, uh, I'll call it an informal negotiation on their price and scope of work. So um, I was successful in getting that for you. Um, I have the numbers in front of me. The grant award was $26,400. Plus your local finance is six thousand six hundred dollars, and if I did it that way, that thirty-four, oh, thirty-three hundred dollars, thirty-three thousand dollars, twenty-six thousand four hundred plus six thousand six hundred is thirty-three thousand. Yeah. 
that uh, award includes the uh, management uh, overseeing the consultant, which town also has an agreement with LCPC for that service for a cost of $3,000. We were anticipating the study to be around $34,000. Um, the price that we got down to with the consultant, they um, we discussed and they accommodated uh, looking at a minimum number of alternatives um, given the situation. We're not going to rebuild a brand new modern bridge, for example. It's a historic preservation project. So there's not really a lot of alternatives at this whole time required. Um, looking at the alternatives for that more actually with the storm water the flood control aspect that requires a little bit more thinking. Um, and the second thing they did was lower the number of people that they were going to send to meetings. So that's a nice way. We don't need every every person in the ranks of the staff of the consulting company to show up. Um, so their price got down to $36,926.29. And that would make uh, compared to the award of twenty six thousand four hundred, uh, the town share of the total project cost would be ten thousand five hundred twenty six dollars and twenty nine cents. So um, I guess I I should so that uh, that's a good point to pause and see if anyone has any questions. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Questions, Mark? Have you seen this already? Do you have questions or anything else we should consider? No, I have not seen this. What he just shared with us. Yes, okay. I haven't seen that. Yeah. So it's new to me as it's new to all of us. The new, the new lower cost. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Do you have any questions or concerns? Not at this at this time. Okay. I will have more concerns when we take the next step. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh you have our share is ten thousand five twenty six in the grant award in the sixty six hundred. Am I correct in thinking that leaves a delta of three thousand nine twenty six roughly that the town has to our original match was sixty six hundred. The grant amount was twenty six uh two thousand six hundred. What that said, I'm sorry if I caused great confusion. Your original estimate for the match would have been $6,600, and now it is more along the lines of $10,500. Right. So if you had $639.26, you'd come up with 10, 526. Right. So it's approximately 4 k we would also have four thousand. Uh, four thousand dollars yeah. more than you were expecting to pay out of the town's budget. The original match was sixty six hundred. The new match is ten thousand five hundred twenty six. Difference is about four thousand. You guys are saying the same thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was using exactly. Too many numbers, Duncan. Okay. Or four thousand. If you want to do. Okay. <laughs> Some people are quicker at math in their head, you know, I'm one of the slower ones. I need a pencil, pencil and paper. So that, that, you need a motion to. I just want to make sure that I that was, our total match is going to be the 10,526. Yes. Pound share will be 10,526 and 29 cents. Uh, okay. And that is approximately three to four thousand dollars in that range more than you originally anticipated okay. approximately 39 okay, 26, yeah. right okay. Okay. No, 39 26 29 okay. yeah. any other like okay anything else now yeah go ahead the original 6600 was going to come out of this year's budget correct me if i'm wrong there this upcoming budget or no year? This one ran in 2023, not 2024. And I'm trying to remember, I don't have a budget status update, but we had 6,600 and- It's coming out of the bridge control department. Well, that's what yeah. I said about you. I don't think we ever talked about it coming out of the fund. 
because that leads into my second question. Well, we would have done revenue. I think and the budget is still no amount for that. What did Walter Pomeroy pass at town meeting? He wasn't there. <laughs> no, it, when we were talking about Scribner Bridge. 30,000. 30 grand is what he 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 passed. He, we voted on at town meeting. That was in what, 2019? Yeah. Probably. Back in well, 2019, I don't know it might have cost covered that. everything or not. This is funny. But yeah. He stood up at town meeting. We, yeah. We had 30,000 left over. Where would it show up under revenue? Oh, we wish it was. Yeah, it's very big comes. But that's you know neither here. Well, I think we could, uh, I guess the question I would have is, is it an eligible? Right there. Bridge Reserve Fund? Yeah. Yeah. We have 15,000. Well, last, no, in this, in this year, 24. In this current year, year, we pulled out 35,000. Well, what's the spend, Brad? You got to look. No, I think it's the same amount. No, no, no. 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 Same. Planning on the spend being the same amount. I mean, like, year to date, how much have we spent on that line item? Oh, very It'll be like a budget status report. Yeah, so. very little. I didn't look at that at the last meeting. I have a thought, which hopefully is helpful to what you're all getting at. Um, It'll take us at least a couple of weeks or so to sign an agreement with the consultant. And probably another couple of weeks after that before they even start. Um, please remind me your your fiscal year end. Is end of June. June. So we might the town might not need to spend any money for this project in this current fiscal year before June thirtieth. I suspect they actually want to. Well, that's more of a problem. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> For sure. Well, unless we take it when we have a work on the bridge. Well, we can put it into it also. We're already check it out. Like, that's where the 15. But we're proposing taking 15 out. We're proposing taking 15 out. No, we will be taking 15 out of 24, right? For 23, we took 35 out. Well, oh, we propose taking thirty-five thousand out. We don't actually take it out unless we use it, correct? We don't need anywhere near that money. This is a reimbursement grant, so yeah. the town is responsible for paying the consultant of the NLCPC, and then uh, part of my job is to assist in requesting the reimbursements um, from the trans. So you see that money sometime after it's actually spent. Right. Okay. So the bridge and culvert reserve fund knows that. Let me just ask: Are we not going to do this? Like, do can we can we make a decision on spend now? Because I think we're just going to spend it in this fiscal year. We're going to try to in this fiscal year anyway. If we agree to this, then we can. Um. Oh my gosh, what's the word? The accounting word where you. Against allocate it. it. If we can allocate it, thank you. Um, we can allocate it for this year if we agree to this tonight, because we already know we're going to spend it. Great, right, Rosemary, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but if we don't agree to it by the end of the year, then that is trickier. We should agree to spend it right now if we're going to allocate it. I agree, Beth. It seems like we're going to spend it. Are we really not going to spend later. it? Right. Well, if it's coming out of the reserve fund, I'd almost rather spend it next fiscal year. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. But instead of having an allocation or holdover for four months, we're already in budget season. We don't have that. Well, what's going to happen is that we're going to have a certain amount of money in the general. And out of that money, we have to decide whether we're going to. Reserve some of that money for us to put the plan to be off, right? Or is that what we What's the motion you need, Beth? To spend I need the to know if we're going to approve this or if we're going to hold it over to another meeting. Okay. And the thing is, if we don't approve it tonight and we hold it off for another meeting, we're I find it very hard to believe we're not going to approve it. So, what is the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. 
Yeah. Um, so my understanding is uh, if we don't do this, this is a necessary step to give additional funds to actually do construction on the site. If we don't do this, we're not going to have much success in going for the mother application for extra construction. Indeed, that is absolutely correct. And uh, further in, in the details of that strategy, getting the scoping study from VTrans will allow someone else, a different agency, perhaps emergency management or something like that, to be a possible funding source for construction. Whereas if you get a scoping study from, for example, emergency management, VTrans does not necessarily accept their scoping study. Mm -hmm. So the scoping study for VTrans is uh, the pathway that leaves the most doors open for identifying and obtaining construction funds. So that solves that. And um, one more questions, right? Um, the 2010 scoping study was specifically for flood mitigation. I highly doubt this firm is going to come up with anything different as a result on the flood mitigation. Do you think we could go for a grant just for the historic preservation and keep the 2010 scoping study for flood mitigation? Or are they saying, okay, that's 13 years old and we're coming out with the same result, but you have to do it? Am I making sense? That, yes, you are. And it, it's a, it is a nuanced question. I think the shortest way to answer it is. Um, Yes, as you get closer to construction, it's a good time to advance the details of what exactly you want to do. The older study was fairly conceptual, and some other storm events happened since then to change the conditions. And the other thing that you need is this consultant actually did throw a new idea past me that I had not been thought about before. Hmm. Maybe I missed that. What was it? The new idea is in um, of all of the structural engineers uh, in Vermont, uh, this this person that's assigned to this project, but it's someone I can trust um, very much. Uh, his suggestion is to explore the possibility, so it's not a certainty of putting a culvert behind the abutment rather than the low water crossing. So the alternatives that, that people look into is the required do nothing. That doesn't take much analysis. Uh, the low water crossing, which has already been identified as the preferred option from some time ago. And the new idea of a culvert behind the abutment that would uh, be set at the proper elevations and signed appropriately to take the flood water. So rather than going over the road, or push watching the bridge away, it would go through this relief culvert, so to speak. That so, was that was part of the 2010 study. Was that part of the 2010 yeah. study as so well? They talk well? about uh, <laughs> four foot tall by 12 foot wide. So it could work. Mm -hmm. It's a viable option. They'll dig into the details on those and present them to you to make decisions before you spend any money in building anything. Pricing has changed, um, and uh, there's several, uh, at least at least one major storm event has happened since then. It's not more than that, um, that could have influenced the thinking. My only question is, um, is there a major difference based on whether we spend in this year or that year? Are we spending, we're, we'd be spending out of the same place either way, correct? I don't think it really matters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do we want to proceed or not? We'll move to the next step. The reduced proposal as submitted by Bob from LBTC for a slight reduce of the work and a slight reduce of the cost. Can we have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second. Discussion? Do you need um, an actual number in this, Beth? Uh, the 10, 5, 2, 6, If 29. you would prefer to have it over, then go for it. Oh, we have to pay for the whole thing. Say that again. We have to pay for the whole thing. 
Right. So I'm just, reimbursed. Then we don't need a real number. I guess we don't. Carol had a question. Hi. Um, Ron had asked that in your motion that you also designate somebody to sign the agreement that several people have been to go in. My motion is to include the authorization for the board to chair the sign and all the fractions required related to the government. Second. I'm friendly to that, yep. Third. You were the second or third? third. <laughs> I think I was the second. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Well, do you need specific dollar amounts in the line for you? Is that fearful or? It's up to you. The revised proposal total cost is $36,926.29. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Holy cow. So is everybody able to add that dollar amount to my original motion? I agree. Okay. Donna, how are you doing over there? Um, the dollar amount is 36, cents. Okay. You good now, Donna? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you gonna vote? All those opposed? Nay. Uh okay. I just have it. Thank you, Rob. A point thank of you board. very much. Yeah, thanks, thank Rob. Thank you very much. Thanks, I'll Rob. write the paperwork through Carl to for signatures. So when you read your contract with the consultant. And from Carl Art, um, I did send it today. Um, uh, I assume it worked. It might have been close with the email or something, but um, the revised uh, scope of cost um, number for the one that Carl has it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thanks for working with you. Okay. Um, a point of form based code administrative officer. Can we? Um... Extend our thanks to Paul for his work on the NPR. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much as well. Thank so. you for all of the Northern Birders, Mark. We know it was a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident this is a good application. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we appreciate all the help. Thank you. Okay. Um, a point of form based code administrative officer. So Brian was formerly our, our, Brian Story was formerly our um, administrative officer with his resignation, goes his administrative officer role, title, I guess. Um, so we would, should appoint someone if we can. Um, so we'll leave it there. Are there thoughts? Anybody wanna raise their hand? Well, it can't be a select board member and it can't be a member of the planning commission. Sure. Donna? <laughs> <laughs> no taking. <laughs> Given that we haven't even had one appeal. Well, I guess I guess how many how many actual applications do we have? Uh, we don't have any applications. Have any. We do but, have a observation that there should be an application, and I'm not sure how that falls into this discussion. Either way, regardless of that situation, we should try to replace me each one. We're going to ask him what I was going to ask Paul, but I think it's very limited uh, time availability, but it's it's a seemingly very small time commitment. Now having said that, we're going to get three applications in the last week. Um, I don't know if they want in the last two we years. Have a no. <laughs> <laughs> Your hand went up. <laughs> David, go ahead. Any application for a variance should be directly reviewed. Say that but, again? But it has to be handled initially by the administrator. No, variance should go directly to the 
But I don't know you know, it's, you know, the need to keep your hands. That's something that's the way we have to take a file of application for endurance. And as I read, I actually read this in a But uh, it seems to me that they say that the application for learning goes directly to the review board. So it's acting in the patent of the right person instance. So uh, it may be that no one ever applies for a very right attention is that once there is a an actual case so that's decided by the officer that you're looking at or whether it comes back to the review board, that I think will open the gates. David, when you say a variance, does that mean somebody who has formally filed? Like, how is variance defined? Someone asking for a variance wants to do something which is contrary to the justification of that district. I see. So this is a question of, you know, it's kind of like it fits. Uh, so maybe we can, you know, Twist it down a little bit, make it a straight application for a permit. Uh, this is something that's not provided for. In other words, all the things that the people would apply for that would be more pretentious. Yeah. We go the variance to my guess. So. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't see it as being something that you can sell to someone that's being, oh, we haven't had any, so we're probably not going to have any, so long as we're taking it. But we have this wow. set of cases which haven't required that. I literally don't remember having it come up since I've been on the board. Do you? Well, you would not necessarily know that. Spend more time tonight. That's true. Okay, that's true. I was an alternate on the DRB and we never once heard of anything. So, so if, if there is, if, he had, if, if I had made an application to the administrative officer, we completely complied with all the rules and regulations. I never would have heard anything about it. It's a, it's only if somebody wanted to do something outside of form based code. Um, exactly. So I still think we, I think you're right. I think we need an administrative officer to make sure that the rules are complied. Now, if you're required to do it, then you're going to go about, you know, somebody's got to be there. They're receiving. Um, and the time limits are generous like they're not a quick turnaround it's not like 48 hours it's no. it's like it's two days. weeks or something but, yeah but it's still you know yeah. it's not it's, it's, a, it's, it's a means of ensuring that if, if the town doesn't act on it they're just going to on that ratio Mm -hmm. um, so it's about the checking balance on the overall system. Okay. Actually, the reason I think I'm going to go for the car here is that somebody would say, oh, why don't we have a reason to do that? Well, it almost happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how do we want to proceed? Carl, your name is thrown in the ring. What are your thoughts? Well, somebody wanted to tell us tomorrow and ask for an application on the town the town should be able to respond to that further right after the town is 
So are you saying in the meantime you'd be our intro? Yeah, I I don't I yeah. The only other thing I was thinking is that we did have a committee that set up the form based code, and we also had a select board that set up the form based code. Um, the select board, none of which are currently on the board, and I was wondering if any of them might be interested. That might be a smart idea. Mm -hmm. So, we're looking to know all your hair. That's good. Well, I was thinking about uh, actually asking people who are formally involved rather than nominating them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's one way to do it. Casey's in the audience and she says Howard would love to do it. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. Um, and maybe like maybe you could be our interim just so we have somebody in place for right now, but um, quickly nominate a different interim until we um have a full-time town administrator who could potentially be that person kind of where my thought was going <clears throat> um is, were you gonna say something i think that we should send a request to the planning commission for their For them to nominate someone. That is the process. I understand we're going with on interims. The planning commission could do that. That's fine. Is that in is that in the form based code? Does the planning commission look back up? I feel like I read that. I'll be back. But I understand yeah. that we're all on a time constraint. Um, I'd be supportive of Rosemary. I'm not putting you on the spot at all. Do you know if there's any uh, of the uh, other people in the office that are here on a daily basis that can serve for three weeks? Uh, okay. I'd be supportive of appointing Carl on an interim basis and then um, having the planning commission go from there. I'm willing to make that a motion. You comfortable with that, Carl? You can say no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I I will more formalize it. Uh, so I'll make a motion to appoint Carl Rogers as the interim form based code administrative officer and to ask the planning commission to uh, nominate a permanent administrative officer. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No, well, I mean, permanent, right? You mean what Beth said, uh, the interim is for the town administrator? Uh, until we have, no, in this case, we need to word it that until we have a permanent administrative officer form based code administrative officer because it may end up being our town administrator, it may not. We just need to have somebody in that pool. Okay, uh, any other discussion? You want me to leave that on or off? On, it's on. Uh, okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, let's have it. Thank you for asking, Rosemary, and out loud. The one thing, if I could just ask before we move on from this, what what is our approach if there has already been a violation of the form based code and we now need, need to deal with it after the fact? And is this something that we should just bring up at a next meeting? Because uh, I do think it's something that we're going to need to talk about based on my reading of the form based code. I don't know if yours agrees with it, but. Um, 
I don't know what the process is. Sorry, I'm not up on form based code. And I don't know what the process is if somebody doesn't issue or submit a request, what enforcement looks like. Is that something? There's a section on reporting. All right, so just to repeat it, because I know the machine might be loud, uh, there is a section in the form based code on enforcement, and we're going to have to take a look at that. So, thank you for providing information for us that I can read myself. <laughs> it would be initiated by the administrative officer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can put that 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 way. So before I leave, please take off. Then I drove up Spring Street before I came here. It's uh, X minus fourteen days. Did you hear that, Dean? I am. I've been in contact with each other. I've not heard back from them. So I got uh, after the board meeting last time, I knew confirmation of getting stay what our sign trade was and trade bond. And I revised for the same amount of using the exact same amount of the building for that. Yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like this might be the first thing <laughs> that we're actually going forward with our and the first person that we might actually start having to respond. Okay. Do you think any threats from that being gone by the Yeah, you can take that to the end and the opposite. Thank you. Okay, next up it is uh, Rio Point, Point Forest Fire Warden. Uh, I motion to reappoint Corey Davis as the town forest fire warden for a five year term expiring June 30th, 2028. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Discuss, discuss seeking bids for oil. Um, so I assume everybody read Carl's notes on this. This was on our annual calendar to look at oil bids in the summer months. Um, and then also Carl suggested that maybe we look into um, the competitive energy services to see if they handle, could handle contracts like this, which sounds like a lovely idea to me. Can you tell us more about that, Carl? Uh, so we'll have to explain that to the Twelve years ago, at a town in the city management association meeting, uh, there were two of the school district, our representative, they were on the stove district and one of the Williams Town area. And they talked about competitive energy services that their school district was using CPS for them. And a number of us um, from the community contacted CPS and started using their services. But my experience with it as a man of winter when I'm preparing the budget, I contacted and asked for your thoughts about what we should be trying to explain in this year, starting July. And they, around that time, depending on the market, started contacting us. So one year, it involved as early as March, they told us it should not take your prices now because the prices were quite low. Really good. What's going to happen in the coming months? Prices are going to go up. So, the early March when they were locked in prices. And we were using them for propane, for gasoline, diesel, and energy. Uh, they would accept suggestions for local vendors if you have any. We made some 
So other years, but recently, where it is for diesel and gas, the prices have been coming back, whether it's how much the add or the economy has been put on the rack for it. I do look at the only half a minute or something like that. Uh, with propane, um, they can help us with a very top level to a set amount for a year. So they're basically, are they basically an analysis service? So or they're, they're checking out the market for you and then you pay them an amount based on how many gallons you got. Recording stopped. Okay. Recording stopped. Everything ready in the second. So they're like a broker. Can you um, do you remember a, about what their contract amounts were per gallon? I, I can't I imagine can't. the large large sum can try to call it. Insufficient this space. But yeah. so when the GMP team is reporting to the end of the month, they can report to the house. Some of them will stop it right on the office. They don't get it. Yes. It should be reporting to the cloud, not which device. Very common. Why are we forced to the I want to say that that is coming in around a thousand dollars per year. So she has a service. Um. Uh, I can't speak for the board. I'm certainly interested uh, if we could get some information about CES. Uh, there is uniqueness in Johnson, like every town has, where uh, in the past we've had one fuel uh, delivery company, but both the town and the village, separate municipalities use it. Uh, last year, the trustees uh, voted for the town to select the fuel supplier and the town voted for the trustees to select the propane supplier because they burn more propane than the town and we burn more fuel than the village. So I guess I'd love information and maybe this could be an adder at a joint meeting. I only because I don't want to go down a path without the trustees' knowledge and willingness to honor the towns. Um, I think this is a great on track. I agree. Also, I, no, it's silly not to because the town's obviously looking for this, the lowest, you know, amount, just like the village is looking for the best price of propane. So it was a good deal for both last year. I would like to actually see this added to our joint meeting because I think that it'd be beneficial to share this information with them too with about the broker and what the options are. So if we could add to the joint meeting and get information for that joint meeting so we could be reviewing it together. Is there just a standard um, contract or set amount or does CES actually send out a, a formal bid? I'm not sure if they actually send out paperwork or if they have you know contacts that they can call up a company like Ben River or Brooklyn or yeah. so and it's a you know, town jobs you know, has this many you know, tanks that need to be filled in size is etc you know, what would you charge um so are they not consolidated do you know do they work with multiple units now that would make sense to me that they would approach i'm surprised that we haven't been approached by that i would think they would be consolidated going to that river and saying hey, Three hundred thousand gallons of diesel that I am using, and then move it on. Uh, that would be. I haven't heard about that kind of like what the person saying. Uh, but you understand what I mean. Yes, they would have contracts with thirty pounds. Yes, I understand your question. I haven't heard of that spoken. They have they handle it. Exactly. Yeah. They're kind and of especially if you're this number smaller town that might be more helpful. 
Okay, I haven't been on that since me. We ought to be buying with the collar and with everybody else. I'm not profit in the area and other of the townhouse. I guess in a nutshell, to speed this item up, what are your thoughts, Shane? Let's go down the lines. I did come in about halfway, but I'm uh, I, I'm definitely supportive of talking about it with the village. Um, I gather this is just getting bids for oil. Um, so I, I don't think we need any action tonight. Am I correct? We don't need action. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I definitely look forward to talking it over with the village and having more information about our options. So. It's just the kind of thing the cop would just walk over to Eric's office and tap in. Sure. Bring up the subject. You you know, talk to Eric and say, have you heard of these folks? Do you know anything about them? It's like folks interested in yeah, uh, talk with them uh, see if the village has had any experience with CBS and right. ask if they have any problem with being at the agenda. Well, there's a person in this room that would know the village is every year. my nose. There you go. Um, I'm really glad you brought it up. Something like this uh, company that has some sort of analytics and market studying and everything, and if it costs the town a thousand dollars, it could save the town five thousand dollars that very day. I'm super supportive. I'm very supportive. All right. I think we're all generally supportive of just a quick joint meeting topic. Yeah, absolutely. I think it would be important okay. if, if Carl was able to have a pre conference, if you will. Yeah. For the Eric, just to gauge the, the trustees' interest. I mean, if, they, if they end up saying no, you know, they got an awful lot of general land on buildings. That... Yeah. But if they do the same thing as last year, which I thought was a very good deal because we bought the majority of, of the diesel fuel. Yeah. So they just said the town selects the diesel fuel vendor. So then the town could even go um, under contract with I'm sorry, uh, competitive energy services just for diesel fuel. But if they offer propane and the village is interested in saving the taxpayers and the ratepayers of the village, I would be surprised if they didn't want to explore as well. If we are under price for voting. Sounds good. Okay. Mark doesn't want to pay any more for sewer water. So we will talk about this again. Um, yeah. Thanks for the information, Carl. That will be helpful. Um, do you have? Do you need anything from us? Do you have everything you need? I know that tomorrow we we'll need to get some idea of how the propane of the village buys in the year. So I could and use that when I'm talking with my contact. Yeah. Okay. For the town, you mean? How much? Oh, the you want the village? Okay. Yeah. And you have that from last time. Okay. Um, July meeting. So. We don't need to change the July meeting, um, but we could. Can I was everybody make a July third. So July third is obviously the day before July fourth. <laughs> it's a Monday. Uh, July fourth is a Tuesday. That's my point. Uh, I would really like to have. Um, personally, I would really like to have a really light meeting. For that July, if we do it July third. July third, yeah. I don't mind doing it July 3rd. If we do, I just want to have a late meeting. I agree with the late meeting, but um, yeah, third is fine with me. And I don't know what's going to be Mount Pelier's light. <laughs> what are Mount Pelier's fireworks? That's the real question. My favorite. Rosemary. The grain list will be lodged and everything, so we can set the tax rate on the third. The only thing I'm concerned about is the school tax rate, because we don't have a state budget yet. Isn't that supposed to be out by June 30th? It's supposed Governor to be, Vita. but some years it's been late. But it's the state, so yeah. they would always The only thing we really late. need it for is to figure out how much the town's to be reimbursed for um, veterans exemptions over the 10,000. 
maybe you know this. It, do we, um, as a state, have to pass continuing resolutions to fund things the way the federal government does, or how how does that happen if we don't have a budget by? Yeah, well, I'm assuming we're going to have a sometime in June special session, like, right? Coming back to override the veto. Well, out of our hands. Mm -hmm. Do I want to shoot by the sixth? Wait, does it make more sense? What's the, what's the, uh, are, are you going to pick Monday off? Um, no. July 3rd, and we'll start you picking Monday off? Not, I'm not. The most important person in the room is not taking July 3rd off. That'd be done. Let's keep it light. Yeah, but you're in control of the agenda, so you can make it as late as you want. I'm gonna keep it light. Sometimes we only just do tax rate, that's it. In fact. I'll have to put yeah, out that, 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 that was before we did two, two meetings a month. Yeah. Yeah. That's when they really be efficient. <laughs> There's no way it's going to be a light meeting. It's going to be light. A light meeting for this board is three hours. Nope, it's going to be less than an hour. Okay. Check. You. But you all have to be accountable. When I ask if there's any additions to the agenda, the answer is no. I, I already added like no issues or concerns. Things. What? Okay. Oh, it's our next meeting. Nine one one. Don't need to do nine one one. Don't need to do it. Review the no, it's off. contract for day five minutes. Control. Uh, I will. I'll throw a wrench in the works. Oh boy. So this this amount is just for the just for dispatch. Just for dispatch, yeah. Oh boy. Oh, that's the wrong one. I will motion authorize the chair to sign on behalf of the select board the dispatch contract for Lamoille Valley or Lamoille County Sheriff's Department for the amount of seventy two thousand eight hundred eighty seven dollars and zero cents. No second. So Say that again. Say the dollar amount again. Seventy-two thousand eight hundred and eighty-seven dollars and zero cents. That's so it's seven thousand. Okay. Um. All the uh, any discussion? <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those yeah. opposed? Yes. Yeah. I was gonna say you put the motion out there. Um, Rosemary, I don't really want a copy of Mark Rogers. Signature. I want a copy of all of the signatures. Okay, I just have it. I think I didn't say that. I'm signing that one right now. But I don't want to sign this copy. I just want to copy back from them or Carl, whomever. I just want to copy back from them when we have all the town signatures. We don't do all the towns. No, the whole board needs to sign that. No, I authorized the chair to sign on behalf oh. of the board. Okay. Didn't somebody say, I'm pretty sure somebody said that Roger wanted a copy with all towns on one. I know Scott, I seen... Scott Griswold did. That's the, uh, that's uh, the uh, same. Uh, that the same. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. Jane, you want the big one? Oh, in that case. Just make sure everything's, everything's good, you know. Yeah, I will make a motion to approve the sheriff's contract for, let's see, sum of $536,655 and zero cents. This is for patrol. This is for patrol, yes. Say that number again. $536,655 and zero cents. Uh, yeah. And that is the number that we put in our budget. Yes. Did I agree to that? I don't know. Um, do we have a second? I have. Mm -hmm. 
I, I will second that for the purpose of, of discussion. Okay, discussion. What was the percent increase in last year? Was it five weeks for talking about? Oh, I do believe he came, he came with eight and we came down to five. five yeah. And we had to convince the other towns to go down to five too. Yes. So do we have any knowledge at all? I mean, I, I guess the bill passed and has been signed by the governor regarding changes to the sheriff's department, but none of that had anything to do with um, retirement. You heard anything from Roger? I did. No. I heard that the things he had told us about them being able to switch isn't going to happen. I heard that a while ago, though. Um, so, as far as I know, nothing is happening. Haven't heard anything recently. So, to so in that, for the so what that might not be known if you know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I was gonna ask. You want to... Can you talk about the 20 year retirement? The sheriff's department is in, and I'm not gonna tell you the right um options because I don't remember the names of them, but the sheriff's department is in a retirement option that they chose a long time ago, like 20 years ago, a long time ago, a long time ago to be in. Um, and the contributions by the sheriff's department and their officers was, were less than the other retirement options available. Since then, they realized that the terms of the retirement plan that they chose a long time ago aren't beneficial in recruitment and retaining officers because there are better retirement plans out there where they do have to pay in more, but they also are allowed to retire earlier. Hmm. Um, and the whole topic of not being able to switch retirement accounts has been a hot topic for a couple of years now, at least a few years, probably more. Um, Sorry, why? The sheriff's department has petitioned <laughs> the treasurer's office on numerous occasions to be able to switch over to the lower year retirement plan. And they're all called different things. And it's not the same as the state police. The state police has their own retirement plan. Um, the sheriff's departments were allowed to choose retirement plans, and some one or two opted not to be in the state plan at all. Um, and they one of those two have since been allowed to join the plan that um Lomelle County Sheriff's Department would like to join. That was Washington County. It was Washington or something. Yeah, something over there. Um so anyway. That's the long story short of it all. If they were able to switch into this new option or relatively new option, um, they thought it would end up resulting in lower cost to contract towns for patrol services. Um, but they didn't know where that stood. Back in the winter, Roger was feeling really positive about that, thinking it was likely that they were going to be able to switch. Since then, he's told me that things stalled. I don't know that the door is shut, but things stalled. And he's not feeling so good about it anymore. And it's probably unlikely. Um, I don't know if the actual door has actually closed in having discussions around retirement. And I don't know if this bill means that they took that off the table. Um, I don't know. So part of that discussion was a very preliminary thought that with Roger retiring um, and potential changes that it might be possible to form a municipal union district for police services, which would then enable them to participate in the Vermont Municipal Retirement Police Plan, I think it's a plan B. Well, it wouldn't allow the sheriff's department to. It would allow this new CUD to. It would if if there was a union municipal district, not the sheriff's department. Are you empty? Then, right, then exactly. They could participate. It wouldn't change the status of the sheriff's department because they still have a function. They would still have a function. This new county level or regional level governmental body 
or police force, whatever you want to call it, yeah, would have the option to right. go into whatever plan they chose. Yeah, I, for a long time, have thought that that's the way we should really go anyway. Um, so I'm happy to sign, you know, approve the contract that we've got tonight, but I think that should be on the table as a ongoing point of discussion on it. Who's going to make the final call on this? On what? On whether, where they end up. If we're going to do something like that, we need to have a regional or county entity take this on, or they need to form some sort of a group or coalition or whatever. And we have to release that from their contract. Well, we could uh, contract with both. Like we could have two contracts out there. Or they could contract, or the sheriff's department could contract with this new entity. Super and we could services. still, like there are different options. We could still contract with the sheriff's department and they contract with this new entity. We could contract directly with this new entity with, with or without the sheriff's department. We have to play it all out. But the sheriff's department has been, Roger very specifically, but I think others at the sheriff's department too have been open to the idea of them contracting through a different agency um, to begin a process of supporting police services long-term. Hey. Yeah. Anyways, that contract, do we need to know any more than what we already know as far as the where is this contract? contract? The only thing about the contract is that the contract doesn't have anything about ATV enforcement, and we've talked about that numerous times. That's it. Well, the contract does, it doesn't specifically call out APD ordinance, but it does call out enforcement of town ordinances, right? Sure. Well, I think it does. I mean, that's part of what they're obligated by statute to do anyway, whether it calls it out or not. Yeah, it does specify local ordinances. <laughs> so I think our question is, can we Turn up the heat a little bit. And... Well, certainly people call call them regularly about ATV and how those so. Certainly. Uh, the question the question is, are they responding? I would assume they have. They have to. Somebody calls and says there's an ordinance being violated. My understanding is the standard response if somebody calls about an ATV infraction is that we don't enforce the ATV ordinance. I don't yeah. know if it's we don't or we can't so much, but yeah, it's it, there's it's both. It's both, yeah. Well, I well, think that's part of the issue. I don't want to well, that's I, good. I understand yeah. the rationale that they don't want to get involved in high speed chases. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but but I could, you know, I could easily argue that they should be willing to park themselves at the intersection of OI Road and Clay Hill and check everybody's uh, you know back the registration certificates um, as they're coming off the trail. I mean there there are things that they could do to help enforce sure. Oh, ATV right now. Yeah, um, the sheriff's department could. Fish and Game did do that this weekend, and there was a recent offering again of Green Mountain Club working with VASA to fund uh, Fish and Game runs for some weekends of ATV patrol. I understand your argument. I'm just throwing it out there. So by the time we put the heat on the sheriff's department. Not sign a contract. <laughs> That's exactly Well, you're one vote. I, I There's a motion in a second. We did. The motion can be defeated. I, I when I second it, I mean, yeah. For yeah. Well, and I'm all for putting more heat on them if we think that. 
we're going to get something out of it. Um, I think if we were going to get something specific about ATV enforcement and at the time to do that was before now. And I am confident the language that's in there does cover our local ordinance. It's just a matter of how we get them to uphold that. Um, I don't know. I don't know that waiting a meeting to sign their contract is going to be enough heat to get them to say, okay, we'll, we'll do this, but. Agreed. Are we ready to do something? Are we ready to act or no? I, I will be supporting this, but I, I will want more input next oh. year. If I'm still on the board. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor, uh, we have a motion and a second, right, Donna? Um, for patrol. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 No. You just said you're going to be in favor of it, literally. <laughs> Is your vote yes or no? My vote. Okay. Um, okay. That's how it. Signing now. Next up. This is what happens. Sorry, Carl. Um, Northern Borders Regional Commission grant application celebration. I know. Duncan, you want to update on this one? Uh, sure. Um, I think we all worked pretty hard to uh, get a Northern Borders Regional grant application in. It got submitted. We got verification back from the Northern Borders Regional well, saying that they had received it. And, uh, wishing us the best of luck. So, no, I mean, yeah, this. That's probably all I got. Those are both. Patrol. Um, I'm passing around two copies of the same patrol contract, just FYI. Yeah, it was good stuff. So, many, many thanks to Tori and Sal because there was probably some blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> Definitely was on my side of the fence. Uh, and I think there probably was on their side too. So, um, but it was all submitted and it worked out. Very good. Well, um, anything else on Northern Borders? Do we know what our next deadline is, actually? Uh, they're, they're supposed when to they're going to get back to us? In August or September, maybe? Like, August is yeah. okay. The city buried application for the balance. I have a favor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next up is, and thanks, Duncan, for all of your work. It's no appreciated. Problem. Next up is consider extending industrial park stormwater engineering proposal deadline. Okay. <laughs> so I motion that we extend the deadline. RFP on the Vermont Electric Co-op stormwater design to June 19th. Is that basically two weeks from tonight? It is. The next board meeting. And that's for any engineering firm that's interested in submitting a bid. No I'll second. Second the motion. Whoops. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, should I Rosemary, Rosemary says, says yes. yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Did you say aye? I did. I did. Okay. Uh, all those opposed or abstain? Abstain the mark. Got it. Okay, I just have it. So, uh, as a follow up on that, I think. Can you let Tyler know, or do you want me to let Tyler know that we have officially extended? Good you, and then I'll reach out to whoever sent that out in the first place. And we'll yeah, I'm happy to do that. As far as I know, it was posted in the work in progress, and the BLCT classified, but I'm not even sure it was in there because I don't remember seeing it. So we probably should put it in the you know, CP classifies as well. Yeah. And I, I think I've got contact information from the engineer at, or the guy who's responsible to co-op. I can let him know that 
There we go. Is that the new? Yeah. So. Okay. Okay, next up is Roundtable. Um, I just wanted to do a quick update on Roundtable. The Roundtable discussion was really, really good. Really enjoyed it. Um, so we had pretty much everybody that was invited showed up except Evan and Mark. <laughs> Uh, right, Rosemary? We were, uh, we were together. Oh, you were together on this. Um, we had reps from the state who were very engaged. The state was really, really engaged. We had VCL, um, VLCT also very engaged. We had... Um, yeah, we had Senator representation from Senator Welch's office and also from Senator Sanders' office. Um, I think probably the person that we engaged with, the two people we engaged with most, Tim. Um, I wish I had taken notes. Tim, Tim, Tim Turney. Turney. And yeah. Tim Turney's commissioner. Oh, okay, it's in here, it's in here somewhere. I think he was at uh, DED. Um, I'm not sure. It just says from, yeah, from, uh, Department of Economic Development. I'm not sure whether he, what, what level he's at. They basically had answers for every single development topic that came up. Those two, very specifically those two. Yeah. That's right. Um, we talked about small business a bit. We talked about, uh, trails and recreation. And we talked about um, the industrial park. Um, When's the trail to be open? Oh. It's open again. It opened again this past week. So uh, Fisher Bridge is safe? My understanding is the full trail is open. I saw a uh, um, V-Trans posting that everything, that the whole entire trail is open. Yeah, I think just, it's, just like a couple days ago. It's still technically up, so it's closed. So I can go for it. Oh. Yeah, I think I think they were detouring people around Fisher Bridge, but you can, yeah. And then the other area was the sinkhole that they opened back up. Back inside. And traffic has been nuts the last couple of weeks. I mean, I, I've seen people, a lot of people out on their bikes. Yeah. It's a big deal. Um. Anyway, I think that my takeaway from of it from it all is we have a lot more resources out there than we've utilized to date. At least my view on what we've utilized to date, and we need to make sure that when we get a permanent economic development person in place, that they are in constant contact with a couple of different resources but very specifically that um, economic development group. Um, there's two different economic de development groups from the state. I forget the difference between the two, but one was focused more on the rail side of things. Um, and the other was just the, you know, the normal economic development. Should they consider that forest and parks trail? It was the forest and parks, but there's something weird about development that they have in there long name. They have a really long name. What am I missing? It's okay. One of the grant possibilities was uh, land, water, conservation, and recreation projects. It was what, Duncan? Land, water, conservation, fund, recreation fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and the the many different funding sources for everything that we've thought about doing, and even things that we haven't really thought all that much about doing. Uh, certainly, very exciting for me. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of stuff I think we can look at that 
we don't need to be spending a bunch of local money on and we don't we don't have to i think that follow-up that we need to take is i think we need to distribute those minutes to our committees i agree and make sure that they understand the full breadth of funding out there um grant funding very specifically because while some people in our committees are really good at seeking that out and finding abstract funding, I think there are other big pools of funding um, that we should be tapping into also. Particular committees. Yeah. It's clearly after the election hell out of fun. Well, Greg could be less time for that. For that I heard he is. Um, maybe long term we can get something that is like a resource. I don't think we're ready for. It. We don't have the capacity for this at the moment, but maybe getting something together that's like a a resource directory of where to go uh, to look for support, both in volunteer support, but also in money. I can't remember if I sent it to the entire board, but the Chittenden County. Planning Commission's website is incredible for that. I've never seen it. I sent it to you. I don't know if I sent it to the whole board. Just the link. Chittenden County Planning Commission website has a page or an Excel document that you download, something of that shape that basically says if you're looking for money to do X, here are your options. Bam. It was super impressive, and I'm not smart enough to remember. Is that um, just for like municipal and nonprofit, or is that for I mean, it's a, business stuff it's as a well? Or? Planning commission, so watch the same like Memorial County Planning Commission when they do work for nonprofits, they work with municipalities. Um, it's impressive. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we should share that with our committees too. We need to get our permit distribution list set up and going. Um, All right. Are we ready for the next? But if, if everyone hasn't read through those meeting minutes, if you could, it would be good just to. It was a good meeting. Yeah, and I will say just for my part, I did share um, a couple of the ideas from uh, related to the um, rail trail with the rail trail committee at their recent Perfect. meeting. So. Are you the li their liaison? I am their liaison. Yep. Um, okay, good. Did you have anything you wanted to ask? I just wanted to ask if you wanted those minutes so the resource sent to all committees or just the ones that might make you so friends, like the recreation committee, the skate park committee, the conservation commission, planning. I think pretty much most of our, like, I can't think of a committee that hasn't asked for a grant at some point. So I think it doesn't hurt to send it to all of them. Yeah. The DRB, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, use your judgment. Yeah. And yeah. you can send, you don't have to send it to all the committees, maybe just their chairs and they can distribute. I can send you the link to a card. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Anyway, I want to have one of those sessions like once a year. I think yeah. it would be really good for us to stay in the top of minds of our folks coming. And we can show progress, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Discuss Eric Bailey's email about time highway ordinance. So Eric sent an email that I shared with everybody on the ordinance. Um about culverts and headwalls. I'm thinking that um, we should talk about this a little bit. It's the last page of the packet, by the way. Um, what are everybody's thoughts on this? And do we want to respond in any way outside of a public meeting? Do we want to wait for a joint meeting to address it? How would we like to proceed? 
The first thing I want to point out is that it's not an ordinance, it's policy. Uh, and the section that he refers to, I think Carl quite accurately points out, is related to the installation of driveway culverts. You know, it doesn't specifically say driveway culverts. The section, if you read it in its entirety, if you read it with the entire section, um, well, the entire policy, it's clearly aimed at private persons installing driveway culverts within the so-called private section of a town highway or anything. It has nothing to do with stormwater. It has nothing to do with catch basins. It has everything to do with driveway culverts and headers and applying for permits to do that. So I think Eric is not really understanding the policy very correctly. And the problem is he submitted that theory to the bill of trustees. I read that Evan's suggestion. I read the trustee minutes. And I guess my concern is that they kind of took his opinion at face value with regard to our policy. Um, and I think they're trying to apply it to the Manchester situation incorrectly. And um, I assume there's no similar policy that is more specifically related to catch basins, anything like that. There's not. If you look, if you look at the entire policy, hopefully you've got it in your you've got it in your little book. It's in my binder, yeah. There is a section that talks about storm drain system, but outside of the village, the town doesn't really have much on the way of storm drain. You know, most most of what's out there on town highway is Now I noticed that the minutes talk about the village trying to make a, an ordinance related to storm and drain improvements, etc. Hard to know what that's all about. Um, my issue with the with the whole thing is. Regardless of whether or not you call it a culvert or a culvert with a head wall, I mean, what's out there now more closely resembles a storm water collection system. You know, we're talking about, you know, a tractor hub, a, you know, a, a tractor tire rim as being the catch basin part, and more closely resembles a storm water conveyance system than a culvert. Um, so I just think it's, you know, we can argue about whether or not Manchester has some responsibility. They probably do. But I think it's just wrong for them to try to get out of any responsibility. I think Evan's proposal of who's there 50% of the cost was a reasonable, a reasonable cost. And, the other thing I have a real problem with is I don't think we can, you know, even even if it was important and even if it was adopted, you know, to apply, I don't think. I think we would have a very tough time applying it retroactively yeah. to the 1960s or the 1950s. We don't know. You know, one of the Manchesters may have talked with. Uh, either the village supervisor or the town highway informant and said, I want to put these culverts in. Uh, is it okay? And we have another section of the policy regarding uh, the issuance of right of way permits that specifically says the town started issuing right of way permits in the 1980s, everything prior to 1980s grandfather. So I don't think we're going to apply it, even if it was appropriate. I would love for us to get some of these things more fleshed out on paper because the amount of gentlemen's agreements that we're we're dealing with that you know were made before any of our time on the board uh it's an issue and you know I don't I, I certainly don't want to make an enemy out of a private taxpayer, but I would like for us to be on the same page with the village at the very least when it comes to addressing this, which it seems like neither of us really 
you know, has any, any recourse, but neither of us really had any, like both of our boards, none of, none of the current members were on the board when any of this stuff happened. And it makes it pretty difficult for us to move forward. Okay. Okay. Point out another problem or inconsistency, and we should probably take care of this. It's not really related to the issue of Manchester, but the, the policy that is in our book is somewhat in contradiction to certainly the long standing policy and written policy prior to that, that the Property owner would install at their own cost the first driveway culvert, and thereafter the town would assume the responsibility for the culvert, including re repairs and replacements in the future. The policy that is adopted in 2020 is very clearly um, the property owner maintains continuing responsibility for the cost of the placement of those. Public structures. That's. I I talked with Eric about it, and I said, "Is that what the board intended to do?" And he said, eh, "I think we just signed it because it, it because Brian brought it to us and said this is a new state guidance on highway standards, and nobody really looked at it." Well, when I look at this book with all of the different, there's like, I don't know. Well, here's another one. I've come across at least five references to um, either road access, road work, highway access, um, to your point about building out, building out drainage for a private property. There are many, many references to specs and responsibilities for all things road. Um, so I can understand why somebody would go and find a document <laughs> that is either beneficial to what they're trying to say, or they didn't have, they didn't know that there was going to be many things listed. I feel like we need to do a better job of consolidating. Um, you're right. Absolutely right. What you're seeing in there is about, about a 20 year period of policies. Um, so some of those shouldn't even be in there. Right. Like, you know, the early ones, the 2002 and 2006 policies shouldn't even be in there. Right. Is it something that the select board randomly does to update policies? Yeah. Sometimes it's random and sometimes it's not. I don't know if random is how I describe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's probably it's a... certainly within the purview of the board to adopt. And you probably work on maybe. Every year, they say we're going to look at each one of the Right, they cycle through. And they cycle through. We should do the update. The update. Well, we know it's a problem. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. That's she doesn't need to come to the policy. No. I mean, the thing is that you're right. You do cycle through. We should have an inventory of all our policies. I'm not even convinced we have that, frankly, because most of them oh. are on the website, but not all of them are on the website. <laughs> right. Um, not all of our policies are in the book. Either. Yeah. No, they're definitely not all in the book. For sure. I mean, which is kind of one of the things. You go to our website, these are our policies, yeah. these, these are the, you know, so for the taxpayers, they get like, oh, <laughs> access one, one man, one man, one man, one man, one man, wants to know, a caller wants to know, you know, the ordinances and policies that are controversial or asked about a lot of the ones in the town website. Yeah. That are controversial or what? Or asked about a lot. What about them? There Those are, are the ones that are on the town website. Uh oh, okay. But nobody would know that it's here. Well, not all of them are. Lois pointed out that the road naming policy 
It's not on the website. You know, we have but that one's not asked about a lot. No. Or controversial. Apparently, it's controversial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this might be an interesting um, project that we could hire an intern to do. Read through our policies and find conflicting statements for somebody who's looking to go into politics, law, law, yeah. um, town administration, business business administration, sounds, HR. Sounds. Like there's lots of different things that, that, there's a lot of different jobs out there that embody policy and policy management or even roads for that matter. Right, employees and roads. That could be really beneficial to us. Yeah, I mean, I, I have been sort of informally going through a lot of our stuff and yeah. kind of like taking- You're hired. Well, you know, I I think I can do it informally and I can put together a list of different things that I've found. I've got an ongoing list, um, but I think it would probably help us to have someone with a little bit of a, you know, more official law background doing it, um, but- they would just notice things that I don't probably. So what are you doing with your list? I mean, I'm compiling it and putting it together so that we can maybe do something about it. <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah. So probably the immediate question is, do we do we respond in some way or other to Fair. the email that was sent out? I think the thing I'm concerned about is that he provided that information to the trustees and they appear to be using that as a basis for um, not wanting to talk about the possibility of any kind of clash. I think if I read the minutes, if you tell me what you think, I mean, you read them too. It, it seems to me like they're trying to absolve themselves from any kind of responsibility. Yeah. I think there should be a discussion. Can we sort of. The, either the administrators or the chairs or somebody. Moved by this board to discuss it with somebody on the trustee board. There should be a discussion about the misinterpretation before our joint meeting. Um, I would dominate you. I'm sick that day. Mm. <laughs> You're also a road burn. Commissioner. Oh, commissioner. Which is nothing. That's okay. It's really important. Yeah. It's very important for this conversation. All right. You guys Anybody else want Evan to put their hand up? <laughs> Everyone good with Evan? Shane's putting his hand up. So, do you have any thoughts as you read the email and review the document? I have the same conclusion as you about, like, you know, sort of like taking out of context. I also know that the date that that policy was adopted, 2020, and uh, Brian pointed out those catch basins over at Manchester swimming on our tour, and they look like they must have been done back in the 50s or 60s. And so, well before this policy was adopted. Um, and I also looked through that policy for more language, and, and I found in section six three different subparts that all kind of refer to. A driveway culprits or access, mm. the location of the access, entrances and exits, and in the section, part of six under section six, and it's all about people who have access. So there's a lot of um, um, verbiage in there that leads me to believe that this thing is about driveway culprits. Mm. And what they've done out there from where I saw it, you know, it's on one. Tour of Brian and trying to remember everything. It didn't seem like they were driving. Mm -hmm. It seems like they were a series of catch basins along the street. And they just happened to have a single culvert coming out of each one of the ledges and going to the river. Yeah. And one of the things that, that, the, that the policy does talk about is, and we had a similar situation with, with another private property owner. Uh, almost identical situation. They hooked on the end of a town culvert 
ran a culvert down across the field and filled in the drainage ditch. And originally, there was a drainage swale to take the water from the town culvert across the property, you know, to some other piece of property. Um, the property owners took it upon themselves to fill that in so that they could have a nice lawn. And then when it came time, when it, the culvert was all rotted out, when it came time to replace it, they wanted the town to replace the entire thing. I mean, this is kind of a similar situation. This is for Manchester for their own convenience, hooked onto the end of a town culvert and building it. And, you know, the water is conveying to the river. So, you know, in my mind, I, I, I don't know who's responsible, the village or the town. I mean, and like I said, Dan Re Henry Manchester may have asked somebody at the diner and said, you know, can I do this? And they said, yeah, go ahead. Um, wouldn't be within, without the realm of possibility that that happened. But we're not going to know. Uh, it seems as though we have to do something because Manchester are not going to own that property forever. They're not. And I, one of the things I wonder is I know when we had the joint meeting, I made the comment that Jason and Nate should get together, go down there on a rainy day and check out whether or not all three of those culverts are really necessary. I don't know if that ever got conveyed to Jason. My guess is I, it didn't, but I don't know. Possibly I conveyed it incorrectly. I did talk with Jason and say that the board had requested that he get with Nate and meet down there. I did not remember the rainy day comment and I didn't say that. So I know it's on his list, but he hasn't done it already to go down there, but I missed the rainy day thing. I mean, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I can totally talk, or anybody can talk to him. Because that was one of the other things that the trustee member said was the possibility of eliminating, you know, one or more of those problems. And maybe that's possible. Yeah, certainly. I was going to ask is kind of saying to the, the landowner, we're either going to fill these in and let you be responsible for it going forward or <laughs> you're going to be at the table in any of these future discussions is that is that a possibility for us or yeah yes. certainly and you know if the village really doesn't want to be involved in it in, you know we can we we can put in a culvert with a headlong uh, on the end and open it up on the other end you know, worst case scenario, we could dig a ditch, or we could tell Manchester they need to open that drainage swell back up uh, to allow the drainage to go the way it originally had. I mean, well, CJ will be at the next joint meeting. Um, Eric confirmed that he reached out and was prepared to be there. Uh, so we should definitely bring that up then. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in the meantime, do we want to respond? Like, I feel like responding to that, I told Eric, he asked me in person if I had seen his email and I said, yes. And I believe that what you're referring to is a reference to driveways, um, but we should talk about it in a meeting. So uh, I feel like responding to the email isn't going to change anything. My response to an email or anyone else's isn't going to change the discussion that they're going to have or have already had at this point. And I, I personally feel like the joint meeting is the right place to bring it back up. That being said, if it still makes sense for me to respond to the email anyway, I'm happy to. And just say that, um, or or Carl, if it actually for that matter, and just talk about the section, the section six that you were referring to, where it references driveways over and over. Um, unless you wanted to reach out. Serve at the pleasure. I'll do what I'm told. So given. One small piece of value about doing that for the joint meeting is so that the trustee can't go into the joint meeting thinking, well, the select board didn't respond to Eric's email, so we thought this was all okay with you. Uh, it's that way they dealt with it. Yeah, so you can get a suspect. 
and that's going to be discussed by us. Yeah. I think that's a fair point. I, I personally think it would be a good idea to to respond. You know, if, if if Carl's the right person to do that, I'm certainly fine with that. Um, I would also say that Eric didn't have any qualms about sending a copy of that to the board chair of the board and the board and vice chair of the town. Um, maybe maybe we should send a response to the to the uh, chair and vice chair of the of the village trustees in addition to Eric and just. Simply say we think you you know we've discussed it. We think you misinterpreted. They're on the email. Well, Ken is on it. Uh, PJ is on it. I thought it was too. But PJ might be too. Ken is definitely on it. They're both on it. Yep. Yeah, I was just going to suggest um, an email from Carl, kind of gently saying we think this is out of context. That's funny. Carl's not even on this email. Yeah, well, I found it. Well, it is the TOJ administrator shared is on there. No, it's not. No. It's not. Am I? I forwarded it. Oh, you're right. But you should still respond. <laughs> you comfortable drafting some sort of response? Uh, okay. Beauty. Yeah. Carl, do you need anything else? I can cross that off my list. Yep. You were just joking when you volunteered. Yeah, I was going to mention. Contact Jason about this week. You certainly can. Uh, you said, are you doing it? Oh, yeah, I'm going to. I was going to tomorrow morning because I specifically remember I did not tell him rainy day. And I must well, we have a headline, I don't think. Right, no, I'm sure. <laughs> Touche on that, but I guess we are. No, a little tiny bit of rain, but nothing. We haven't had rain in a really long time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're lucky. You need it, Carl. Your experience. It sounded like the opening to the Superman theme. Very sick to have a lot of similar discussions. Well, they're separate around the separate municipalities, so uh, the matter of getting that drainage through, we can have this type of thing, but we did have a lot of very city, and very town residents were very city water customers, which was all very city water has to come through very town to reach the city. <laughs> and then also assume that they have to see treatment by he provided very town provided the collection system for very town residents who were on that using very town did very town maintain the streets and stuff or flowers there in the city? No, no. not painting. No. And it's a separate municipal. Very unusual situation. Hyde Park does it also. I, okay. But it's You're very right. unusual. Yeah, Hyde Park is also. It's very unusual. Most in most instances where there are separate village and town or city and town, each entity has their own highway department and maintains their own streets. And that's another conversation we can have with it. I'm I'm happy to have the conversation with the, with the trustees. We'll we'll turn over the streets. <clears throat> do you? You can be you can have hundred percent responsibility, and then you can do whatever you want, sidewalks and everything. So. The divorce instead of the merger. <laughs> well, it might it might prompt some discussions towards the merger. That makes sense. Very enjoys this one. Okay. And that sounds like another agenda item. That's a whole yeah, yeah. Thing. FEMA, FEMA, FEMA reports to June thirtieth. Do you need FEMA? anything for a FEMA report? What do you need? I had to talk with Brian twice today, so. One of those conversations I asked him about this because I haven't seen anything else about, about the reports that were leaked. I think that that, uh, that item on your Excel spreadsheet is something left over from the year before or two years ago when the town did have some FEMA grants or uh, projects that it works. But he said, 
But right now, the town doesn't have any open Ingo grants or projects. I think the last one was Scribner Bridge, wasn't it? Right. And it closed. Yeah. I'm just worried we didn't file closing. Are we? The money for Holmes Meadow, isn't that through a mitigation yeah, grant a mitigation. that's funded through FEMA? I think so. But how far has that gotten? Well, it's not too far from here. I know, but <laughs> that's well, how far the process is. That's how far it's gotten. Not too far. I would be willing to bet that Seth Jensen at LCPC knows the answer. I was just going to say, with most of those FEMA projects, LCPC was the primary yeah. person administering the grant. So maybe Nobody here read the calls. So if you, you were, I couldn't understand everything you're saying. Do you think there's an open FEMA grant, a project mitigation grant? Mm. We think that there was talk about applying for a grant for Holmes Meadow, H-O-L-M-E-S, Holmes Meadow, um, for flood mitigation. We don't know whether or not anything is active, though. But, but Seth would know. But Seth, Seth would know. know. Have Carl just reach out to Seth at LCPC. Yeah, I, think yeah. I would ask Seth very specifically about Holmes Meadow, but then I would also ask him if he knows of any other outstanding FEMA items, whether it be grant <laughs> or claims or anything else. Yeah. If there's FEMA paperwork to fill out, Seth will know about it and he will be very unhappy about it. So he's, he's about? the person to ask. Well, he loves FEMA. Uh, like FEMA. Uh, okay. I love we FEMA. all love FEMA. I I believe it. I believe it. Would have yeah. been. I think there was. I mean, the whole purpose of that was the possibility of a buyout of the home. Mm -hmm. Not all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We can touch base for <clears throat> Okay. Um, executive session to discuss the legal opinion. What was this in context to? Ah. Don't stand up. Don't stand up in session. Hang on. I know. I motion to enter into executive session to discuss attorney-client privilege as allowed by one BSA three thirteen A. I have a copy of it right here. Somewhere. The right one, not it. Oh, now you're gonna make me read them. Yep. Okay. And the follow-up is gonna be who do you need to invite? Uh, no, I guess the preliminary would be I move to find that premature disclosure sure. of attorney client privilege would place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now I'm Are you going to vote? Me. Go ahead. Now I motion to enter into executive session as allowed by 1 BSA 313A1, which allows for uh, four. Which allows for my what? I'm an attorney client. Confidential <laughs> communications. For confidential attorney. Yeah. Need for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. Yes. Second. And Biden, all those Rose in Rose favor? Uh, Rose Rose and Carl. Rosemary and Carl. They still want just Carl? Uh, well, I would say Rosemary is totally up to her, but since this does involve a, I don't want to put her in an awkward position with regard to. We shouldn't invite Rosemary. We'll let her go home at the end of the meeting mm -hmm. anyway. All right. Bye, Rosemary. So, just just Carl. Okay. All those in favor? Me. Bye. Bye. All right, let's have it. We are in executive session at 9.08. <laughs>